I'm 4'11". Watkins! Warriors! But the voice that comes out of me is about six feet tall. Ooh, give me chills. Joyce Webster. You know when I get chills, right? Is? So energetic. A force. It means it was good. Come on, give me some face! I will say you can hear me before you see me. No matter how big the space. Hey, there! Let me hear you! The cheer coach for Watkins Middle School fills it. It's very, very cool to be back at my alma mater, not only to coach where I cheered, but to actually get to coach some of my friends from high school's children. And we jump, and we jump, and we jump, and we jump some more. Coach Webster has great expectations. It is respect and pride and dignity and school spirit. And she usually gets what she wants. Excellent. That is exactly what that looks like because she inspires. She's always trying to make us feel happy and special and she's always energetic and a, a cheerleader. <laughs> that looks a thousand times better, great job. But Joyce isn't just looking for perfection in the gym. Oh my gosh, it's a grasshopper, it's gonna be okay, I promise. I like my kids to always remember you have to give back. So work hard, be respectful of your school, have school pride all the time. If there's weeds in a flower bed, it takes a couple of minutes with 30 kids to pull weeds. Joyce Webster is clearly a coach from head to toe. So come on, Watkins, put on a cheer face. Big face! That big voice in your head wants you to know. You're going to be a role model no matter where you go when you're a cheerleader. The force is with you. So always use that position in school for positive and not negative. It's like this. You need to spread color. You want to leave your mark on this world. Spread life. Even if turning humans into X-Men was all he did, Giovanni Santiago could be called a transformative artist. Yeah, it looks cool. We're doing some body painting. But to see how he really hopes to change his world, you need to see his full body of work. I'm a airbrush artist. That would be my specialty. Wall murals, automotive murals. Frank, your order's ready? For example, several graffiti burgers have been his professional playground. Well, the first one was like, all right, I can pay the bills. And then they called me again like a few months later. I'm like, oh, sweet, yeah. So you guys liked it? <laughs> Giovanni knows a guy has to eat, but green is far from the only color that inspires him. This is how I'm living. You can see that in a tired old strip mall in Grove City. Ah, that's my jam, bro. This is Giovanni's old studio, where the door was always open. You need more Tupac in here. To neighbor kids who would wander by, couldn't help but notice something pretty cool was happening inside. He invited them in to create. Who's to say that I can't stop what I'm doing for an hour, two hours, three hours of my day and focus on these kids? Spreading motivation, uh, just spreading uh, just the fact that you can do anything that you want. We first met Giovanni last spring as he painted a mural at a rec center in Valley View. Soon after, he went to Haiti. We decorated an, an orphanage, a hospital, giving them some kind of hope and some kind of color, and, and not only that, a story that they can tell. With a palette that's equal parts, paint, inspiration, and motivation, Giovanni Santiago is one artist. Life isn't permanent. Who can truly add color to people. And so I want to leave my mark. You can do anything for a year. For Kathy DeFrancisco, every day. Conditions today are great, it's sunny. Brings a date with distance. Because it's not just a day, it's a number. Today is day 131. Another thousand or so steps closer to the destination. Running. 365 days a year. Why do that when nobody's chasing her? To raise money for cancer research. Because as she strides through Autumn's finery, her brother-in-law, Vince, is recovering from a stem cell transplant. This is my way of coping with things, kind of take my mind off of what he's going through, uh, but also do something that benefits cancer research. <laughs> I'm on day 132, and he is on day 132 of his treatment. She's been with Vince every step of the way. Always, always. Um, we went and saw him last night, and he's doing well. I know whatever I'm doing, you know, his is 10 times worse. And so no matter how bad I feel, he feels 10 times worse. After each run, Kathy writes. Day 100, what a milestone for me. And it's here in her daily blog, you see what's running through her okay. this year. I am not sure if I use this challenge as a way to mask my emotions. Sorry. 
I promised myself I would give a shout out to the older lady with two pugs who cheers for me on Saturday morning. Much love and thanks, Kathy D. I'm running with my cousin and her husband. We're on day 133. A third of the way down the road to 365. So far, so good. Kathy DeFrancisco counts the days. I know he's been rooting for me. Driven by knowing Vince is counting on her. I'm going to make it. There's not another choice. This is Maddie. No introduction for Abby Sims Clark is complete without including her personal rescue roster. Maddie and Mia are the dogs. Sissy, Gussie, Mary, and Jake are the cats. One day recently, while watching TV, Abby saw a Humane Society ad that really rubbed her the wrong way. Dogs and cats that looked really sad. Why wouldn't people come to, to get them? Abby stood up and said, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of not doing anything. And with that, she sat right down to write a letter. Dear community, my name is Abby Sims Clark. I am eight years old. I'm trying my hardest to get the dogs and cats at the Humane Society homes. Please adopt. If they can't get the love and care they need, they will die. If we do act now, we will save their lives. The Humane Society is located at 230. You know, made a promise, told Abby I would make sure it got to the newspaper. Dad made good on his promise, and? I got in the paper. I was on the front page. Come on, baby. Come on. Since then, the Ross County Humane Society has seen steady donations in Abby's name from as far away as Massachusetts. For someone her age to ask for that kind of help is a big message because nobody realizes how the little donations goes further than any big one that we get, definitely. Abby's classmates bought into her message, too. We're doing a bake sale to help raise money, and then on Friday I came up with $271. Bring cat food cat litter. This is not so much a story about a letter. Little girls write letters all the time. The story is what all of us can take away from Abby's belief. No matter what, you're an eight-year-old little girl who's impacted a community. I think that you can still go for it. Even though you're just one person, you can try. I felt like this is what I was meant to do. Thanks for coming. On the kind of day that reminds us why chrome was invented. In a place where dreams are in technicolor. That, that means a lot to me. In our Mike Hoover is in the driver's seat. I feel like I don't have a choice, you know what I mean? His sixth annual car show, glittering, growling, fantastical proof of the power of a gearhead with a goal. It was just a couple of dads trying to do something to raise money for their kids' school originally. A school for kids with their own challenges. I have uh, uh, two little boys, Adam and Aaron. Uh, they both have varying degrees of autism. That's puzzle pieces sewn into that. Adam has autism. Aaron has Asperger's syndrome. Mike admits okay. his drive to gather all this perfection together came from an imperfect place. I think it's, it's probably pain and anger. Just, you know, just to be honest. You know, your child's diagnosed with something and you're like angry, what can I do? And then you finally find that outlet and it makes you, it makes you feel not so helpless anymore. Hardly, his foundation is a high horsepower fundraising engine for OSU and Children's Hospital based autism research. The goal for today is $30,000 to, to the Make It Fit Foundation. 100% of what we take in today is going right back out. And will be reflected in the lives of virtually every person on this lot. All these people you see here today, have a story of someone in their life that's affected by autism. Sort of the way you dreamed it? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I really dreamed it. It's just, it, it fills your heart back up, you know, after yeah. to see this kind of stuff and you, you pour your heart and soul into it and it gets filled back up by all these people. Mike's also been traveling the state, showing off another fundraiser, this custom bike to be given away in October. And the parking lot's entirely full. Sure the With the drive to turn a diagnosis. 75 right there, can I get 80? Into dollars. Mike Hoover is making it fit. It's been an incredible experience. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. It's been a blessing in some ways and your, and your worst nightmare in others, you know. So, 2,500 Last Saturday at Mifflin High, 
Columbus Rec and Parks dance competition, bringing together teams from rec centers all over town. We're about to go out there. This is the last competition of our season. Time for Coach Hardgrove to let his Brent Nell kids loose. Just do it! All right. This competition thing is new for Cordell Hardgrove. One, two, three, four, row, row, here. Early on, like at the age of four, I knew I was going to be on, I was going to be somebody famous, like next Michael Jackson. Ballet is his background, but since starting the Abstract Motion Dance Company for Adults, he's been giving back, volunteering to choreograph and design shows for the Brent Nell Rec Team. I'm trying to visualize something. What do y'all feel? For the 20-year-old, it's a chance to pull kids in different directions. We decided that we were going to make it like a modern-day thriller by Michael Jackson, and our theme was like gothic Barbie dolls. And I like introduced them into like thinking big picture, and we run with it. I am up and dancing with them at all times. He's a hands-on teacher, and that's how I learn better. Instead of telling me what to do, he shows us. When I started with them, they weren't that good. I've seen like their confidence level shoot up, their social skills. They have like an idea of service. On Saturday, the Brentnell Rec team put in the 110% Cordell demands, and in the end, it was second place for the judges. As for Coach, We did really good, and this is a start to a greater thing. Seems the guy who thinks he was born for stardom has another role to move in. It's kind of far-fetched, but like we're, our mission statement is starting to be change the world. A quiet Saturday in Hebron, ticking off the end of the year. Time to give her up. And the end of a career. Turn her over to somebody else. Smile. Yeah, buddy. Inside the fire hall, it's pizza and posterity all around, as the New Year's Eve crew says so long to the guy they call Tater. A lot of people had nicknames here, and I had one that was not appropriate. And um, so we, one of our firemen started calling me Old Tater. At 68, Donard Myers is heading into the second half of a 24-hour shift, his final shift. I'm kind of emotional, but uh, I've been blessed. The Myers name has long been synonymous with safety in Hebron. Well, this helmet belonged to my father when he was a volunteer, and he died in 1964. And then I got out of service and joined the fire department in 64. Been in public service all my life. Uh, had the opportunity to save lives, and it's just gratifying to help the people in the community. <laughs> in a short time. <laughs> yeah. And in the community of the fire hall, he's like dad to the young guys. Uh, he's everything in this place. Everything, yeah. I know just in the last couple of years, he's taught me a lot. But he'll still have one particularly good friend to visit. Oh, baby. This 1926 Boyer was once the only fire truck between Zanesville and Columbus. Donard is restoring it. All right. Just a good old girl. Shall be known as Donard Myers Day. With thanks from a community. <laughs> and a place where he's always welcome to visit. I'll be around here though I'm dead. Old Tater welcomes the new year by riding off in style. Woo My father always told me it's going to be a long road with a lot of curves, and it's been there. 